Hi guys, it's Jordan from PMP Campers. Just going to be doing a handover video on this Bailey Adamo. It's a 75-41. Um, so it's based on the 72 plate, also that's 2022 Ford Transit chassis. Um, and it's on a uh, automatic cab as well. So what I'll do is I'll show you under the bonnet and show you what we've got going on under here. And then I'll work my way around on the outside and then we'll show you through the inside after that. So under the bonnet on the left hand side we've got your washer fluid, brake fluid, engine oil filling point and your engine oil dipstick is this yellow topped one just down here. The air filter sits inside this nice little box on the top of the engine here. You have got your transmission fluid or the auto transmission fluid down there. Engine coolant is in this reservoir over here on the right hand side. Uh, and then the only other thing to point out on these ones is that you've got a positive terminal for the engine battery just here. Um, and it does tell you with a little symbol here where to use your earth. So it's telling you to use this little engine hoist here as an earth for jump starting. So if you ever needed to jump start the van, you've got a positive terminal here, negative terminal there. And the reason that they do that is because the engine battery actually sits underneath the driver's seat normally on these transits. Uh, so it's a little bit awkward to get to for jump starting. So they give you, you know, access to the uh, terminals under the bonnet. So it's really easy to get to. Um, on the passenger door just here, we open this up. Uh, we've got your cab blinds, which you can see come across really easily just like that. So you squeeze these together and then put it all the way to the right hand side. Got the original Bailey Bear there. Um, your diesel and um add blue fluid are inside here so you get your diesel point at the top add blue at the bottom the passenger door does need to be open in order to open up either of these because they will be locked in place right so just behind the passenger door here we've got your electric hookup so if you do have access to a hookup cable, it's really handy to have that plugged in. Um, it means a few things. It means that your leisure battery will be at full power all the time. It means that all of your mains of powered appliances will come to life and all of your three point sockets will be able to use as well. So the actual habitation door here, we've got the original bin. If you wanna use that on the door um, and you have got a blind here on the door as well central locking this side door uh, we know it's central locking because it's got the um where are they what am i looking at down here inside the door you've got these two little pins which marry up to this bit so that means it's got the central locking so you've got these two big vents just here just to the right of the habitation door these are both to do with your fridge so if you ever needed to get to the back of the fridge for any reason that's where you would go to for those to be honest it's only really for our sort of purposes you know like taking it apart and doing a service or whatever fault finding and all that sort of stuff so you shouldn't ever really need to take those off um but it's just in case you ever needed to um we've then got your toilet cassette locker so to remove the toilet cassette itself we lift up on the little orange tab and then pull the cassette out towards you you'll then be able to take it all the way out like so and that's what you would need to do to take it out and empty it when you're emptying it out, you empty it from here. And when you're physically emptying it, you should be holding down this little orange button at the back. Once you've emptied it out, about a cap's worth of blue fluid goes back inside here. Give it a little swish about and then push it all the way back home, making sure that your little orange tab here sits over this little lip. Once you push that back in like that, you can go ahead and use the toilet again inside. The next little thing we come to is this, which is your freshwater filling point. So you will need to have your uh, filling point cable plugged into there and dropped into a, either a rollaway tank or plumbed straight into a uh, external tap. So you will need to have that plugged in in order to fill the tank up. At the moment, the tank and the boiler are completely empty because it's coming up to winter now and it's getting pretty cold. So we've winterized it so that it don't you know, you don't get any sort of problems with freezing or anything like that. 
Right, you can see in this model, you get a really, really nice big garage. So you've got space in here for bikes, um, all sorts of stuff really, loads and loads of room. So if I just briefly run you through what we've got in here, um, previous owner has left behind a hookup cable so you can use that if you want to. This is the uh, freshwater filling point that I was saying about. So this is the bit that you plug into the side of the van and this is your adapter for a hose. You've also got a mains powered socket. So you need your mains cable plugged in for those ones and a 12 volt socket here, which will work all the time as, as long as you've got your control panel on. You have got your awning winder, which is this little arm just here that sits inside there and all of your original carpets. Um, we've cleaned the carpets off and rolled them up and put them back in here. You've also got some infill cushions up there, which will be for the bed at the front with your electric table, uh, which I'll explain to you in just a minute. You've got a light back here as well, so you can see what you're doing at night. And I think that's about it really for the garage. Right, on the back of the van, um, you've got reversing camera up there or a rear view camera. Um, these two rails just here, just so that you know what they are, they're actually the factory fitted um, bike rack mounting points. So if you wanted a bike rack fitted, you literally just take off these little caps and these end caps as well, and you can just plumb them, you know, the bike rack goes straight onto these points. So you'll see that you've got some little caps inside those four there that they are all to do with that bike rack. So if you wanted a bike rack putting on there, it would literally just be a case of popping it on, putting a few bolts in. It takes no time at all. But I believe that they are factory fitted to the vehicles so you don't have to do that uh, and they're all exactly level and all that sort of stuff okay so on the off side of the van we've got a lot less to talk about than on the near side um this is just an, an extra locker for the garage as you can probably imagine so i'm not going to open that one up it's just literally the same as the other side we've got down here is your wastewater drain off point so if you wanted to drain out your wastewater you pull this handle to where it is now. This is already in the open position. Um, so you pull it all the way out towards you and all the wastewater will drain out onto the floor. So it's as easy as that for the waste. I'll show you where the fresh water drain and the boiler drain are on the inside, um, but that's where your waste is. You've then got your boiler vent. So if you have got the boiler lit up on gas, you'll feel hot air pumping out through the bottom of this vent just here. Uh, and that just double, you know, ensures that you know it's working. Um, I will show you how to use it on the inside, obviously, but that's a way of like double checking that it's definitely working. We've then got your gas locker, which is the last thing I need to show you on the outside of the van. Um, so the gas locker is unbelievably simple. All you need to know really is how to turn the bottle on, which I'll just zoom in a little bit. So if we go anti-clockwise around to the left, that is turning our bottle on. And I would always advise to turn it all the way on till you, till you can't turn it anymore. So that when you come back to the van and switch it off, you can only actually go one way anyway. So it's anti-clockwise to turn it on, clockwise all the way down to turn it off. Um, the regulator over here, you haven't got to do anything with that. That's purely all just there for us or testing purposes. Um, and then your pigtail hose, you've got 2022 date on that. So you've got till 27 to replace that. Uh, and then when you want to change it over to a different bottle, you've already got a spanner in here. So you literally undo that nut from the bottle just there, screw it onto the new one and nip it up with your spanner. And that's it. That is all you have to do. Right, so in the cab itself, if I just hop in here and show you what we've got going on, just move the seat back a little bit. So in the cab, um, just like on the other side there, you've got the cab blinds all the way throughout. So you've got the cab blinds for the front window, you've got the cab blinds for this offside window here as well. Now because it's a nice modern cab, uh, you have got a nice modern uh, dashboard here as well. You've got loads of optional extras in here as well, I'll be honest, you've got absolutely loads. So you've got all of these steering wheel controls, which will all obviously link up to the factory fitted um, radio system there. Uh, you've got your cruise control information over here. So you've got your cancel, resume, limiter. Um, you can set the speeds, adjust the speeds, all that sort of stuff from there. Really, really easy to use. Uh, you've got your washers and wipers over here on the right-hand stalk. 
and your indicators and flash from here. You have also got your lane assist button on the, on the end of here as well. All right. So as I said, you're on the automatic. Now automatics in motorhomes is, is just getting more and more difficult uh, to, to get a hold of. So it's really nice to have it as an automatic. They say that generally speaking, about two in every 100 vans is an automatic. So it's really nice to have that as an auto. The auto on here is ridiculously easy to use. You literally go all the way up to the top for park, back down once for reverse. Then you've got neutral, drive and manual. So you've got two little buttons on the side of the gear selector here, up and down. And if you go down to the very, very bottom and select manual, that's when you'll be able to use these manual buttons. Otherwise, you're just gonna be in drive for the majority of the time and just let it do its own thing. So you have also got uh, a standard Ford thing is the heated windscreen. If I just zoom in a little bit. You got your heated windscreen from this little button just here. So you'll notice on the actual windscreen itself, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, oh, yeah, you can, but you see all the little squiggles on the actual windscreen there, that is the little heating lines in the windscreen itself. So you've got your heated windscreen button just there, absolutely amazing for in the winter time uh, to stop it from sort of misting up so quickly and all that sort of stuff. So um, other than that, you've got your air conditioning, which you come to expect really nowadays. Uh, your heater controls over here. So you've got cold to the left, hot to the right. Fan speed and your uh, start stop switch from there. If you want to turn that off, you can do it from there. So I think that's about it really for the cab. Uh, you've got your reversing screen up there so you can see what's going on out of that reversing camera. Now the reason that they do that is because obviously the standard rear view mirror is completely redundant because you can't see you know backwards from here so having a camera is the next best best thing really to be able to see behind you so what i'm going to do is i'm going to swivel round and show you into the back so oh, i'll just pull this door to a little bit so um the layout in this van is really really popular nowadays so you've got these kind of side settees uh which you can lower the bed which is from this little button just here it's an electronic lowering bed uh sorry table i meant to say table lower the table um and then the table itself folds open so you've got double size and then you pull all these cushions together and use the infill cushions that i showed you in the garage there as well to make this whole area here into a nice big double bed it takes no time at all to make that up um and you've got a little diagram telling you how to do it next to each one of those little twisters there so it really is so easy um, as I said, the, the table itself goes down with this little button. All right, so you can lower that to whatever position you want it to be in or put it back up again as well. When it gets to a certain height, it will stop automatically. And that's it. So that's how you would make this sort of front bed area. Um, otherwise, you're probably just gonna leave it like the lounge. Um, so that's completely up to you how you wanna do that. But um, yeah, very popular little layout. Now, before I get onto the control panel, I'm just gonna show you over here to this little front cupboard. So this brown box, first of all, this is gonna be where all of your paperwork is. Now there's not gonna be absolutely stacks of paperwork because it's literally nearly brand new. So um, don't expect that to be you know, rammed with paperwork because it's only two years old. Uh, but that is all the paperwork that we've got for the van, uh, minus maybe the logbook and things that we've got in the office. But uh, anyway, so in this locker, you've got your tilt and turn TV aerial up there. Now you've got a little diagram here that also tells you how to use it. So it's really, really simple. But basically you just adjust that, uh, that TV aerial itself if you're on a campsite, try and copy where everybody else is, is pointing and then that'll make your life a lot easier. But basically adjust that as and where you need to. You've then got your TV aerial booster, which at the moment is already switched on. So you need to have that switched on there to be able to get any signal going through to any of your uh, aerial sockets in the van. So adjust your aerial and then switch your booster on. Once you've done those two things, you should have good signal going through to your tele. Right, so the control panel itself is very, very simple to use. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. 
Now you've essentially got a power switch on the left hand side, which as you can imagine, powers everything up. You've then got, I'll just switch hands, sorry. You've got these two little buttons just here, up and down, and that'll basically just take you through, telling you what's going on with the vehicle. So you've got your leisure battery voltage, vehicle battery voltage, leisure current, so the amount of power is being drawn, vehicle current, that's not correct, so you can ignore that one. Uh, load current, mains current, we've got no hookup plugged in at the moment, so there's, there's nothing being drawn anyway. Uh, solar current, we're underneath a massive canopy. Internal temperature, external temperature, that's also not correct. Now, I'll be honest, I think that the external temperature thing is to do with the cab, so it's, again, another one of those things that's unlikely to uh, be very accurate, but uh, that's obviously not working. <laughs> I'd be pretty uh, impressed if it was minus 50 outside. Uh, water level, so we're on 0% for the water, as I said, outside. Wastewater level, also 0% because our waste drain is open. Battery select. Now, we are selecting leisure on the battery select as often as we possibly can. And the reason for that is, if I selected vehicle battery, every single thing, every light, every 12 volt powered appliance in the back end of this van would then be powered by the vehicle battery, which obviously you don't want. Uh, as soon as you start doing that, the vehicle battery is going to flatten itself out and you will not be able to start the van up. Now I will say the only reason you would ever switch that from leisure to vehicle is if you were in this sort of unusual circumstance of your engine battery's flat, but you have a hookup cable plugged into the van. So if I select vehicle, which I will just do quickly so you can see, we've now selected vehicle. Now all of the power in the back end of the van now, all of these lights are currently being powered by the vehicle battery, which I'm not gonna want to leave on for long. But if we had an electric hookup plugged into the van, it would now be charging the vehicle battery. Okay, so that's the only reason that you would ever want to select vehicles if you wanted the hookup to charge the engine battery. But for the majority of the time, you're gonna want that to be on leisure because you don't wanna drain out your vehicle battery. Okay, next one is a uh, filled tank. So that's just basically, t you know, filling the tank up from that external water point and your settings. So that is the basic kind of, uh, you know, like all of the level indicators and stuff that you might need to look at. You've got your water pump switch from here and you'll see there it comes up saying pump on, pump off. Now I'm not gonna leave that pump running because I haven't got any water in the tank. Simple as that. If I don't have any, any water in the tank and I know that I don't have any water in the tank, uh, by either checking up there and looking at the um, the tank's level, which I can see is at zero, or if you just, you, you know, you probably just know that you haven't got any water in it. You know, you would have been the one that drained it out or whatever. So I'm not gonna leave the pump on because if I leave the pump on, it will run and run and run because it can't get to any kind of pressure and it will never turn itself off and it will eventually just burn itself out. So you need to make sure that you leave that pump off if you're not using it. The next one over is your lights on and off and your awning light from there. And the awning light is just a little LED strip light above the door. So that's the control panel. It's really, really straightforward. Um, you've got four different light switches just here and a couple of USB sockets there as well. Okay, so if I just explain a little bit more, well, a bit more detail about the water pump. So um, the, the water pump in this particular vehicle works on a pressure switch. So if it can't get itself to any kind of pressure or the, the pressure that that switch is selected to, uh, it won't turn itself off. So there's a plus side and a minus side to that. The plus side is if it gets to pressure and it turns itself off, you know for a fact that you're absolutely up to pressure. There's no leaks, everything's full and you can go ahead and use the van as you want to. That's the that's the kind of idea behind that. So if you were gonna, you know, come into the van to heat the water up and use it, you know, use the boiler and all that sort of stuff, you would need to make sure that you, first of all, had some water in the tank. Then you would wanna turn your pump on and just come over to the tap here and lift the tap up on the hot side, which is to the left, and allow that water to come through. 
at first you'll find that it will come through it will sort of cough and splutter and be a little bit annoying because it'll get things wet but after a you know a minute or so it'll start coming through really nice and smooth and that means that you're up to pressure when you turn the tap off and the water stops you should then hear that your pump turns itself off straight away so if your pump turns itself off straight away when you turn the tap off that's absolutely fine that's all you need to do that means you're up to pressure and you're good to go to use the boiler and all that sort of stuff now also on that on that sort of note without trying to sort of chew your ear off too much about it down here to the right of the bed now what i've done is i've taken this big wooden panel off the top and then you've got two lower panels there to take out as well now down here is one of the most important sections of the entire van so you've got this big white thing at the front here, this is your water filter. That's not particularly important, but it's just good to know where that is. To the left of that, you can see the little yellow tab that's facing upright at the moment. Now that is your boiler drain off point. So if you needed to drain the boiler out of all of its water, you would literally lift that up to where it is now, and all of the water from inside that boiler will drain itself out onto the floor. Okay, so where it is now is in its draining position. So any water that goes to it, will drain straight out onto the ground. So when you come to use the boiler next, you need to lay that little yellow tab down flat, then fill the van up with water, and then draw the water through the hot tap and wait for it to come through nice and clear. And that's the process of uh, filling the boiler back up and getting yourself back up to pressure. So I'll put that back together after the video. You've also got, I can just get myself to it. You also got this little thing down here that you can take out. So this is a cap for your waste tank. So you can get inside the waste tank just there to clean it out if you want to. So just in case you ever wondered what that one there was for, that is your waste tank drain. And the last one I need to show you is this one over here. Uh, sorry, this isn't the last one. So this is your boiler down here. Okay, so if you ever needed access to that, that's where your boiler is. And the last one is inside here under the bed. It might be a bit dark, so apologies for that. But if we lift this one out of the way, you've then got access to the top of your fresh tank. So you can take that little cap off just there, and that will then take out your fresh drain off point. Okay, so you take the cap off and that'll pull out your drain point. So in the motorhoming world, unless you've had other vehicles before, you probably won't know that um, normally or generally speaking, uh, having access to the tanks is something you don't really get. So having access to both of those tanks there is really helpful. It means that you can literally get in there and scrub it if you want to. You can put, you know, cleaning things into there without having to pour it down the sinks and stuff like that. So it's really, really helpful to have that there. So um, the fridge, you've got a three-way Thetford fridge. This is an automatic energy selecting fridge as well. So what I mean by that is when I select here and you can see this little A, that means we're on automatic. So that's the AES part of it. So when I have it selected on A, it's automatically chosen gas for us. And that's because we don't have the electric hookup plugged in. We don't have the engine running, but we do have the gas turned on. So it's always gonna choose gas for us. Now, if I wanna change this, I press and hold on this little button in the middle You'll then see that the A starts flashing at me, and that means that I can then select through the energies manually. Now, as I said, I haven't got the electric hookup plugged in, which is this one here. I haven't got the engine running, which is for what that one there is, but I do have the gas on, so I'll select gas. I can then select my temperature. I'll have that on full power for a bit, and it will light itself up. So the process of using the fridge is very, very simple. If you have the electric hookup plugged in, you would use electric hookup. If you don't have the hookup plugged in, you would use the gas. 
If you're driving, you would use the 12 volt in the middle. The 12 volt in the middle only really holds the temperature inside the fridge that you've already put inside it. So you need to make sure that you pre-cool the fridge before you leave to go somewhere and then just select 12 volt purely just for holding the temperature whilst you're on the move. Um, so when you get to your campsite or wherever it is you're going, you need to make sure that you switch back to one of the other two, either the mains or the gas when you get there. Now, obviously, as I said, you can, if you want to, leave it on automatic and it should select whatever one of those three options there for you automatically. So that is the fridge. It doesn't really get much easier than that. Very, very straightforward on that. Right, your cooker. So you've got the option here, because it's a British built van, um, they tend to give you the option of this electric ring as well. So you've got the three burner hob. So the three burner hob works literally just like a normal household cooker. Push in and round whilst pressing on your ignition. All right, same for all of them. The only difference is you've got this electric ring here as well. So you've got the one on the left hand side here, which will come on and work only when your electric hookup's bugged in. You've got the grill and the oven down there as well. So you've got the grill one just here, which will work with the same ignition switch and the oven here as well. Also same ignition switch. You've got this little cover here for the sink if you want to use it. Down here, I can imagine we've got some gas isolation taps. Yeah, so you've got your gas isolators over there, right? So you've got a little diagram here telling you what ones do what uh, but if i just show you what they do so the top one there is the oven middle one's the fridge bottom one's your water heater or your boiler so if you want to turn them off you literally just turn it 90 degrees so it's facing away from the pipe that it's feeding and then that is your gas isolated from that item now i will say like i do on all the videos you do not need to do that every single time you get out of the van the only reason you would ever need to use those gas isolators is if you thought there was a specific problem or a gas leak on a specific appliance. So if, like, you know, for example, if you thought there was a, a gas leak coming from this cooker, you can isolate just the cooker. So that's the only reason you would ever use that. Just turning, turning the gas bottle off in the locker is more than enough to isolate the, the, the whole van from the gas. And to be honest, the, the gas isolators down there are more so for us doing our tests. So if we found that there was a gas leak, we can isolate them one by one and see which one it is that's, that's causing the leak. So that's the only real reason you would use it. But um, there you go. That's where they are. So the next and probably the last appliance that I need to show you through is this one here, which is your boiler. So the Truma iNet Ready system is the sort of latest... Um, or one of the latest um, sort of controllers for the heating. Now, it's unbelievably simple to use. Okay, so if I press on the button here in the middle, comes up the little digital screen. Now you've got the first, the easiest way to do this is to understand what all of these buttons mean first. Okay, so you've got the heating, which is what we're hovering over now. We've got hot water, which is this one. We've got energy selector, which is this one, either gas or electric. And then we've got fan speed setting over on the right. Okay, so if I select heating here, uh, you see at the moment it's saying off. All I need to do, it will start from five and it'll go up to 30. I can just turn this heating on to whatever temperature I want and press go. You'll now see that we've got three things that have come up here above the top line. So if I turn that heating off, all three of those things go out. So if there's nothing above that top line, it means the boiler is doing absolutely nothing at all and it's completely off. So if I turn the heating on, you'll see we've got a little symbol up here, which means gas bottle, which means that the, 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 the boiler is using gas in order to work. And we've got here on the right, we've got one little bit of the uh, fan symbol telling us that the fan is being, is basically using, it's on eco mode, okay? So, if I choose the energy selector here, you can see it's just gas. We've got mix one or mix two or electric one or electric two. I'm gonna leave it on gas for a sec. So mix one is basically gas and electric, 
but mix one means gas and electric with four amps of power. Okay, so it means your electric hookup will be drawing four amps. If you choose mix two, you've got eight amps, and it's the same for electric one or electric two. Obviously the difference is that if you use it on electric one or electric two, you're not using any gas. It's just electric on its own. Okay, so if you were in a real rush for uh, getting whatever you want to happen on the boiler, if you want to, you know, if you were in a real panic to get it hot or get the water hot or whatever, you can use electric and gas at the same time if you want to, if you've got them both plugged in. Uh, so you've got the gas turned on and you've got the electric hookup plugged in at the same time, you can use the mix. Um, so you've got the heating just there. So you literally just, as I said, you click on that and then you select your temperature. The next one over is your hot water. So you've got eco, hot or boost. So that's your three options for the hot water. Now I'm not going to turn that on because as I said at the beginning, I know for a fact that my boiler is empty at the moment because I've got that little tab facing upright. So I can't use the hot water at the moment anyway. So at the moment, we've got the heating coming on. It's using gas and it's on eco for the fan. So if I want to change that, I'd go over here, eco or high. That's your two options on that one. And that'll basically just change the speed that the, the hot air pumps out through those little vents. So for now, I can leave that as it is. When I come back off this main screen, it stays above the little line here telling us what's going on. So it's still flashing at us, telling us that the heating's coming on. It's still telling us that the boiler is working from gas and it's telling us that we're on eco for the fan. Okay, so it doesn't get much easier than that. The, the rest of the buttons on there, just in case you were curious, uh, you've got a timer that you can set, so you can set for the heating to come on at a certain time. You've got the actual clock timer and you've got some settings which you honestly don't need to know about. It's uh, purely just for our kind of, you know, resetting stuff kind of purposes. Um, but yeah, so that is the heating and hot water iNet ready system from there. Right, so um, you've got in this particular layout, you've got the all separate shower just here. Okay, so separate shower really decent size actually as well i will say that you're, you're going to be going over the wheel arch here so that's why you've got a little bit of a lip there but still plenty of space for a shower room really really spacious um on the other side here you've got your toilet area so this door closes up up against here okay so that's how you can separate the back end of the van from the front now you've got the sink over here to the left um, so that's literally just a hot and cold tap for this. The toilet is normally the only part that I actually explain because um, the rest of it is very, very straightforward. Now, as you can just see from what I've done there, you can turn this little, uh, the toilet itself, you can turn the bowl wherever you want to go. Um, now you will need at least a little bit of water in your fresh tank in order to flush this toilet, okay? So you need to press this button here and that'll pump around your flush fluid as long as you've got some water in the tank and the pump's turned on. Um, so at the moment, I can't show you that actually working because as I said, we winterized it uh, and so it's empty. This little handle just here at the front, if you push this to the right, that's what opens up the flap and drains whatever's inside the bowl here into the cassette below. And then make sure that you pull this back whenever you've finished draining it out. You should also, when the cassette needs emptying, you'll get a little light on the left-hand side of this little panel here, telling you that it's full, uh, and so you can't really forget to empty it out. Other than that, that is about it really for that bathroom. So you can probably see from here, the bed looks unbelievably short. And I came in here a minute ago and thought, well, that's weird. You're not going to be able to sleep on that, but it's because this part here pulls towards you as far as you want. And then you can pull this forwards and lay that piece back down. So that's how you make up the bed into its proper length. Um, so the idea behind it is that you can push this away when you're not using the bed and still get around here nice and easy. So. I think I've covered everything in the van. I don't think there's much else that I can sort of run through. Uh, but if there is, if you think there's anything that I've missed out or anything you want going over again, just let us know. But otherwise, we look forward to seeing you soon.
Thanks very much.